Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and welcome to the solar system we're all familiar with in 2018, 2019 or actually whenever you're watching this video. Today though we're going to go back in time a little bit and imagine the solar system as it may have been billions of years ago and talk about some of the planets that we think are missing from this particular picture. Anyway, let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. So if you actually look at the planets that are currently in our solar system, you will notice uh, there's a bit of a pattern here. So we have these relatively large gas giants, then we have slightly smaller but still very large ice giants. Then there is a gap and we get to objects like our Earth, uh, Venus, a bit of a gap again, then there's Mars and Mercury. Now, you would think that this is actually, you know, a common pattern in uh, various solar systems that you get these large gas giants, somewhat smaller um, ice giants than terrestrial planets. But this gap is actually very unexplainable. As a matter of fact, having looked at thousands of objects in other uh, star systems, we discovered that for the most part, this should actually be kind of more or less very linear progression, sort of um, a decline that doesn't have these gaps. In other words, there might be some kind of a planet missing right here. There might be some kind of a planet missing right here. And there might be some more objects missing here and even further down. So this is where we don't really know much about our solar system just yet. And this is where the mystery begins. Today, I wanted to just focus on some of the uh, things we've talked about previously uh, in some of the videos I made, specifically the missing planets, but also kind of talk about hypothetical things we might find in the future. Let's start with the um, obvious one, Planet 9. This is the planet that still hasn't really been discovered or found. We think it's somewhere far, far away from our sun at a distance of maybe up to about 600 astronomical units or even farther. And we used it to explain some of the perturbations of other planets, including the inclination differences in our own solar system. It actually does explain quite a lot of things we didn't really understand before. Uh, I'm gonna actually move it closer a little bit just so you can see what it looks like. I'm gonna put it in the inner solar system. And basically here it is. It's sort of a kind of a, not really an ice giant, but what we would call a super earth. And this really brings us to the next mystery that this will hopefully help us explain. The uh, super earths are pretty much everywhere in, uh, in the galaxy. Many, 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 many stars have them. Some have many of them. Our solar system has none. This would be a super Earth or at, at least a uh, mini Neptune that would potentially explain uh, why we don't have them. In other words, it's there, it's just far away. Now, in this particular case, this is a planet that's probably mass uh, or 10 masses of Earth approximately. Uh, in other words, it's larger uh, than Earth, both in mass and in size, but not in density. It's not, it wouldn't be as dense as Earth. So there's Earth in comparison. Now, if we do find this planet, it will actually allow us to solve several mysteries, but if it doesn't exist, then it probably existed at some point and just kind of got kicked out of our solar system. So this is object number one. Then we have another object that's probably missing from the system here. And um, oh, by the way, planet nine would probably have been orbiting somewhere uh, between maybe here Saturn and uh, Uranus or maybe Uranus and Neptune and basically got kicked out. Uh, the other planet that's possibly missing is another gas giant. Uh, several simulations, more recent simulations, um, were able to explain the current position of the planets if there was another gas giant. I actually did make a video that goes into detail about this um, possibly a few years ago. Um, but here the idea is that we are basically missing a relatively large gas giant, uh, I made it about 50 masses of Earth, but it could be bigger, um, that was probably somewhere near Jupiter and potentially uh, between Jupiter and Saturn and uh, was responsible for uh, basically um, protecting some of these planets from becoming fodder, from basically being destroyed, but also at some point moved other uh, gas giants and ice giants to the position where they are today. We think that Jupiter was responsible for kicking it out of the solar system, and as it was kicked out, it basically perturbed a lot of other planets as well. Um, and this particular gas giant doesn't really have a name, we just call it the fifth missing giant. But for the most part, oh, look at that, see? It actually just got kicked out of uh, 
our solar system, or at least get uh, a different orbit by Jupiter, which is probably something that happened. Uh, so it doesn't have a name, but it does have a potential um, historical significance in basically making our solar system the way it is today. Very, very stable and with Earth being protected from everything else by Jupiter. So, so far two planets, gas giant and planet nine. We also think that there were at least uh, several planets, maybe even very large uh, planets that were super Earths, that basically collided with other gas giants. So we think Jupiter probably received the collision, so there must have been another uh, smaller gas giant somewhere right here, we're just going to place it right there, that was um, anywhere between one to possibly several masses of Earth that collided with Jupiter. We also think that Saturn also received a collision from another a similar object, possibly a little bit smaller, and these probably came from actually inside the uh, this part of the system. So we're going to move them a little bit closer here. Um, and then we think that also Neptune and Uranus as well received the collisions from various um, objects, which were probably also uh, super Earths. Now, all of these missing super Earths that I mentioned in the beginning of the video would, would actually be explained right here. In other words, other planets just ate them. We think that maybe there's maybe there were actually uh, several objects that were kind of in between Earth and the um, gas giants and also ice giants. And these objects, if we actually just sort this out by mass right now, uh, probably interacted with the planets that basically stayed in our solar system and got either kicked out or swallowed by other planets. So like here we have all of these other uh, super Earths and, and mini Neptunes in between Earth and essentially um, Neptune. So these would ex be explained as well. So in terms of mass, we now are actually completing the picture of missing planets. Right now, there's at least six that we'll need to add to make this a little bit more explainable. And then we also know that there were other objects uh, probably uh, in between Mars and Earth that uh, collided with objects like Earth. So we know that Earth probably received a collision with a, a, a slightly smaller object uh, that we currently refer to as Theia that created our moon. And so we can actually go in here and place a rocky planet somewhere between Mars and Earth that's going to be a little bit closer in mass to, um, to Mars essentially, possibly about 20 masses of our moon. Uh, that we're going to refer to as Theia that basically um, collided with Earth and created the Moon. So this kind of suggests to us that there were actually quite a lot of other objects in the early solar system that would basically create a more or less linear mass distribution in our solar system, but a lot of them got either got kicked out completely and are now part of the interstellar space, or got uh, basically not swallowed, but collided with other objects in our solar system, or maybe even got swallowed by the sun. So Jupiter is definitely responsible for eating up a few of these, uh, or at least one, and other gas giants and ice giants as well. But even our own Earth received a collision with Theia, and we know that even Mars received a collision from a smaller object that basically flattened its uh, northern regions, making it a little bit uh, lower in this area than in this area. So what this suggests is that all of those missing objects that we think should have been in our solar system were clearly there, but for the most part, the so-called late heavy bombardment stage or possibly other uh, very violent stages in history of our solar system basically resulted in most of them getting removed from, uh, from circulation, being absorbed by other planets. All in all, this suggests that our solar system in the first few billion years, or at least the first billion years, was actually much, much richer in variety of planets and in the amount of stuff that was orbiting here. But the solar system today is essentially eight planets with an asteroid field and Kuiper Belt and Oort Cloud. For the most part, it's a lot emptier than it used to be, but for us, it's actually a good thing because this emptiness means that we're not going to experience any serious cataclysmic events from collisions of anything anytime soon, or possibly ever again. Anyway, that's all I wanted to mention in this video, and hopefully you learned something from it, and hopefully now you know a little bit more about what planets are actually 
missing from our solar system and what planets we think may have been there uh, four or maybe even more billion years ago. Come back tomorrow to learn something else, subscribe if you still haven't, and share this video with someone who enjoys watching space videos. And, and thank you so much guys for all of your support on Patreon and other support as well. I appreciate all of you over the years and I really really love uh, where this channel is headed. See you guys tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.